What's up, YouTube? This is your man, Big B Production 100. I have a great video for you all tonight. It's not an issue of video. I just wanted to go over some things that I like to do on my Mac uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. So this is just kind of like a basic maintenance to keep your Mac, you know, running fast, smooth, and, you know, clutter-free, you know. Now, I, I put some videos up in the past on how to speed up your Mac, uh, how to keep your Mac from getting viruses and adware and spyware and stuff like that. But... Again, this is just going to be a basic video on what I like to do, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm using my Mac and, you know, when I'm away from my Mac and I'm at work. So I'm going to start by going into Safari. We all like to use Safari, of course, and Firefox and Chrome, but when I like to do my searches, I search for things, uh, I may stop and play a game on the website or look at different videos online at Worldstar and stuff like that. Some people come to me and say, well, I don't use Worldstar because it's viruses and, you know, all of this stuff. But you can use it if you know what you're doing on your Mac. So with that being said, I like to do some of the things you guys like to do. So once I'm done, I like to just, you know, clear my history. I'll show history and I'll just basically right click and delete. Once I'm done with that, I'll then go up to Safari, go to my preferences. Once I'm inside there, I'll just remove all website data like so to just make everything fresh. This keeps your Safari web browser running fast and smooth. After that, I will then quit it with a command Q, and after that, I'll just relaunch it. Now, that is what I like to do when I'm inside Safari every day. That's fresh and that's good to go. Uh, some other things I'll do, well, I'm gonna go over some of the applications I use. One of the applications I use to keep my Mac running smooth is called Dr. Cleaner. You can optimize your memory and you can do what we call deep disk cleaning. So you can just clean your disk and you can optimize your memory to make more free space on your Mac. That also makes your Mac faster as well. We're going to go inside Launchpad. Uh, some, of you guys, uh, some of you guys probably heard of this application. It's called Adware Medic. It's a great application. It searches for adware on your Mac. So if you have any adware installed on your Mac that you may not know about, this application will detect it and it will let you know. So you can just do a quick scan here. It will then scan your Mac like so. Adware Medic did not find any adware on your system. So that's cool. But anyway, it searches for adware. So that's cool. I'll also be sure to put down below in the description of another video I posted a while back on how to check your Mac for viruses, adware, spyware, malware, and other sorts of, you know, uh, malicious files that can harm your Mac as well. Just look down below in the description and you'll see that video as well. Because uh, I basically put up a video on how you can check your Mac and go deep down inside your system without using any applications. So again, you don't need any applications to search for those things. You can just go inside your finder and go deep down inside your system. That video, I believe, is about like eight or nine minutes. So be sure to check that video out because it's very informative. And I think you'll find a lot of information inside the video that you can use that will help you on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Now that we went over that application, we're going to go over the next one. C Cleaner. I've had this application for a while. Uh, I don't really use it. It comes in handy every now and then, but I don't use it that much. Gemini, that's a great application for using... Um, as far as searching for duplicate files that's on your Mac. So if you download something from a website, you may have a duplicate that may be attached to it at times, or it's good for pictures. And of course it's good for iTunes as well, as far as music. So basically you'll just hit the plus button and you can just drag over any file that you like, such as um, pictures and you can do a quick scan and it will scan that folder and look for duplicates. So that's cool to just keep your Mac clutter free. You know, you don't want to have any duplicates laying around. So that's a great application for that. Let's go back inside my launch pad. Uh, I'm trying to make this video kind of quick for you. Uh, this doctor, that's another great application as well. You can use this as well for um, scanning your Mac. You can choose a folder like so, and you can start your scan. Once you start your scan, it will let you know what you can free up. It's kind of like um, Dr. Cleaner. So now that we have that out of the way, the applications that I like to use, we're going to go to System Preferences. 
Some of the things I like to do inside here on a day-to-day -day basis, starting with security and privacy, is of course, in general, always keep your Mac locked at all times. You may be a college student, you may just be a regular everyday person like myself that work. Uh, you may use a MacBook Pro, you may have an iMac or a Mac Mini. In whatever case it may be, always keep it locked because if you have any brothers, any sisters that like to use your Mac when you're away, when you're not around, you know, you may be safe at what you do, but if your brother or if you let your sister use your Mac and they just happen to go by a website that you may not go by and it installs a file without you knowing, the next time you go to access your Mac, it's going to freeze up on you or something like that. So now you're looking like, okay, how did this happen? I go to check my emails every day. That's it. And do a little shopping online, but you have AdWare in your Mac. So keep your Mac locked. Therefore, you'll know what's being done at all times because no one can know your password. And like I said, if you're a college student, if you're at a Starbucks or something like that and you get up to go get you a cup of coffee, which I'm hoping you won't leave your Mac on the table. But in some cases, some people do. We still trust this world as if it's like Pleasantville, but it's not. But if that's the case, keep it locked. Therefore, if someone picks your Mac up and walks out of Starbucks with it, it's locked and they can't get inside it because they don't know your password. So uh, allow apps to be downloaded from, of course, Mac App Store and identify developers only. Do not do anywhere. And in some cases, you may want to do the Mac App Store. That's more restrict. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to go over the firewall. Always keep your firewall on at all times. That will keep hackers away from you. Well, not away from you, but it'll keep them out. So when they try to access your files, that's on your Mac. If you have your firewall up, it's kind of like having a big, 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 giant brick wall around your house. And in order for someone to try and climb over that wall to get inside your home to steal something from your home or rob you, they would have to spend a lot of time trying to get over that big ass wall. And I don't have that kind of time. And I'm pretty sure you probably don't either. So that's what a firewall is. One big giant wall that makes it extremely hard for someone to just get over to rob you. So you don't want to have a small tiny picket fence. You want to turn your firewall. That's your big break right there. So let's go over sharing. Sharing. That's very important. File sharing, screen sharing, printer sharing, remote login, and all of that good stuff. Let's turn it off. You don't want to share anything because if you're on Wi-Fi, if you look up here, you'll see I'm on Ethernet because I have Wi-Fi on my home, but I don't like to use it because I stay in a condo. So with that being said, it's other people inside this building. And if I had my file sharing on and I was on my Wi-Fi, it may be possible. I may be living in a building with a hacker. I'm not sure. But if I was... That would make it a lot easier for them to access my files that I'm currently sharing on my Wi-Fi, such as my Bluetooth sharing, my Internet sharing and everything else. So I just turn that off. I leave it off 24 seven. I never share anything. Everything is all Ethernet. Of If I need to access some files on my Mac, I just tend to use a USB or something like that. Um, let's go over. Of course, we all use Adobe. Now, I've seen in some cases where people get on a Safari and search for Adobe updates. In some cases, you may be on a website and you'll get that little prompt like, hey, you have to install this Adobe Flash. In some cases, you may get that little pop-up that'll say, hey, you need to install this Adobe Flash. It needs to be updated. It's out of date. Update it now. Now, now, now. No. Don't go for that. Use your system preferences like so. Click on Flash Player. Once done, go to Updates. And then just go here. You can check now. So this is going to go directly to Adobe servers and it's going to check for updates. If you have any updates from Adobe, they're going to let you know and they're going to be installed. But in my case, I just have it checked off already. Allow Adobe to install updates, which is recommended. So just keep that checked on your Mac. Therefore, you don't have to worry about any websites giving you some type of prompt saying, hey, you got to install this Flash. Because when you install what you're thinking, you're installing your Adobe Flash. You're not. You're installing some adware. You don't want that. Now, it's, in some cases, I've heard some people say they had viruses on their Mac. Well, with me, I've never, well, personally encountered a problem dealing with a virus on Mac. But I have dealt with Macs in the past that had spyware and adware and all the other good stuff. Now, keep in mind, they're all different. You have adware, spyware, malware, viruses, trojans, and all that good stuff. But it's all different. And for me to just quickly break it down to you, it's kind of like, um, uh, I'm going to use an analogy. Okay. We have 
viruses and we have adware and spyware and all of that good stuff just like as you have a cold and you have a flu now a basic cold is completely different from the flu you know if you have the flu and the doctors say that you're pretty much fucked <laughs> you know and with a basic cold you can simply go to walgreens and get you some runny nose and sneezy medicine and Hopefully you'll be all right within two to three days and you can get on your way and go back to work. But with the flu, that's very serious. So it's the same thing dealing with viruses and spyware and adware and all that other good stuff. If you have a virus, you're pretty much fucked. You're going to have to install some application or go deep down inside your system and get all of that stuff out of there. Basic adware, you can remove that real quickly and spyware and stuff like that. It's real simple. You can get rid of it. With, and in some cases, you can just get rid of that stuff with a simple update. That's it. That's the same thing with a cold and the flu. So now that we have that out of the way, let's move on. Uh, what else do we, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. I'm just trying to show you guys some of the things that I like to do. Now, hey, don't get me wrong. You may not agree with this. I know it's gonna be some people that say, I don't do this, Big B. This is what I do, this is how I do it. Hey, I've been working on Macs for a long time and my Max is fine. I've never had any problems with my Max. Every now and then, it may get a little slow, but it'll speed back up once I do what I'm showing you here. Time machine. I can't go over this enough. I try to tell everyone I help day to day, every day, every night. Use time machine. I've had people in the past. I've just had people like a couple of weeks ago that come to me and say, hey, I followed your video, but for some reason, I still have these adwares and everything on my Mac, and I can't access my Safari. It's frozen. What should I do? And I've helped them for hours and hours. And it's like, well, you know, the only thing I have now for you to do is reinstall your OS from the Mac store. And then when I say that, they say, well, if I do that, you know, it's, it's going to erase all my files and all of my cool stuff I have saved. And I say, well, do you have Time Machine? And they say, well, what's Time Machine? Well, this is Time Machine. It backs up your Mac 24-7. When you're away, when you're there, it just works in the background and backs up everything you do on your Mac. So that in a case like this, if you had to reinstall your OS, you can restore it from a time machine backup from a later date. Such as mm, if I had to reinstall my OS right now, I can go back to July 3rd. Mm, I can go back to May 9th if I wanted to. I can say, hey, well, on May 9th of 2015, my Mac was working perfectly fine. And after that point, it just went to hell. So I'm going to go back to that date. And it will install everything you had on your Mac on that day. You must use Time Machine, but you must use an external hard drive. So, like I said, use Time Machine. If you're not using it now, you need to go out sometime tomorrow to Best Buy or Apple Store and pick up a simple hard drive. It can be a you know 500 gig or terabyte, whatever you want, and use Time Machine. It comes in handy, trust me. I've used it in the past myself. Uh, with that being said, um, we're going to go over... This, with that being said, we're gonna go over disk utility. Now inside disk utility, I like to use this for when I install updates and when I install the new OS. So for instance, right now we have uh, the new OS coming out by Apple and that is called OS X uh, El Capitan. Yes, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, right now I'm currently using OS 10 Yosemite, but we have OS 10 El Capitan coming out. And when we have that officially for the public, we'll install it. Okay, once you install it and everything is working fine, you want to go inside here and click on Macintosh HD. After that, you just want to do a simple verify disk permissions, like so. Once that's done, you want to just repair the disk. When you're done with that, you want to close this out. When you're done, you just want to restart your Mac but when you restart your Mac, you want to reset your PRAM. That's right, I said your PRAM. When you restart it, you want to wait for that first charm sound. You're going to hear that boom. When you hear that sound, you want to quickly hold down your Option, Command, and the letters R and P simultaneously at the same time. You want to hold down all four keys. When you do so, you're going to hear a second charm. Boom. You're going to hear it again. <laughs> Once you hear that second charm, you're going to release those keys. That's when your Mac will then reset its prim. And you can use your Mac with the new OS that you will install, which is OS 10 El Capitan. I don't know why, but I like saying it. It just sounds so cool and sexy. I guess that's why Apple chose that name.
But uh, anyway, now that we have that out of the way, uh, the last thing I want to go over with you guys, because I know you're like, wow, man, this video is long as hell. Would you please hurry up? It's like, blah, blah, blah. You're just running your mouth. I hear it all. I hear it all. I see it in my comments. Some people say, hey, your video is too long. You know, blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, if you don't want to watch the video, you should read it first. And within the first four to 20 seconds, if you're not feeling what I'm saying, log off and go to another video. That's just me. I'm just being honest with you. But anyway, you want to make sure your downloads folder is empty. I see a lot of people that like to keep a lot of downloaded files in that folder. Me, like I said, this video is going to help to keep your Mac clutter free, fast, and smooth so that when you log on, it's just going to be there ready for you to do whatever it is you want to do. Um, trash can, empty it out. But when you empty your trash can, don't just do a right click. You want to hold down the command key and right click so that when you do, you have the option to do what we call a secure empty trash. That will then erase every item that's in your trash along with any items that can possibly be left behind that's hiding on your Mac that you may not know about. So again, command, right click, secure empty trash. Other than that, you want to make sure you keep your desktop clutter free. Nothing on the desktop like so. See, it's always clutter free. And um, you just want to make sure you do your updates, of course, in the Mac app store as well for the applications that you may currently be using on your Mac. Um, I think I've just about touched almost everything that I can think of. But I know me and I'll be coming up with some new things within the next two to three weeks or so for you guys and I'll be letting you know about that as well whatever I come up with for you guys or someone may ask me a question uh, you can always leave comments and you know whatever you like down below in the description and I'll be sure to get back with you ASAP if you have any questions about anything let me know I'll be sure to put the links down below in the description as well for those videos I post in the past and in those videos, I'm going over things that I didn't go over in this video. And the reason why I didn't go over those things in this video is because, like I said, I already have a video up for you to check out. So you can kind of like watch this one and you can watch those and you'll gain more knowledge. This video is basically for the beginners because I've known it's a lot of people out there that's basically pros at this stuff. And, you know, they do this stuff every day with no problem. So, again, if you're new, hey, hopefully you learned something. Please give me a thumbs up. Please rate, comment, and subscribe for your man. It really helps me a lot. I greatly appreciate it. I'll let you.